Hi, I'm Sean Rice, and welcome to Gaming Out of Suitcases. It's been a while since I've done one of these, but hopefully that will change. Today I wanted to give you an overview of a genre of games that are perfect for games on the go. Mostly because they have almost no components, and because of the magic of the internets, you can play them entirely on Google Hangouts or other similar apps. Role-playing games. I know, they have a bad rap. When you think of role-playing games, I bet you think of some pimply math league nerds sitting down in their basement saying things like, Oh yes, Dungeon Master, yes. And while that may be partly true, are you still making fun of people because they're potentially more intelligent than you and got better grades in high school? Grow up. Role-playing games are the predecessor to video games. Except in role-playing games, you have the freedom to take the storyline any direction you want and solve problems in any creative way that you can think up. I like to think of them as acting-based story games. The players of the game all work together to tell a story where they all play key characters. Now one of the players takes on the role of the narrator, sometimes called the dungeon master, story master, keeper, game master, etc. You get the idea. This player knows the through line of the story. Their role is to describe all the locations that the players visit. They also take on the role of all the characters, more commonly called NPCs or non-player characters, that the players come in contact with. And they describe how the story changes and interacts with them as they move through the plot. Now the plot of the story itself will change as the players interact with it. In fact, the ending may be very different from what the Keeper thought it would be. But as time goes on and the players are playing through the storyline, the Keeper makes adjustments and then they kind of find out together how the story ends. Stories can be rich in personal character development or just hack and slash stories, whatever you'd like. Personally, I like to bring the character development part into a story even if it is a hack and slash because it just makes the story more full and rounded out for me. RPGs are not limited to dungeon crawlers anymore either. Of course, Dungeons and & Dragons and its sister game Pathfinder are still out there and really fun to play. Um, but you can also find RPGs in almost any genre that you're interested in, whether it be fantasy or sci-fi or horror or adventure. You can be set in the Middle Ages or in a futuristic world or anything you can think of. While the mechanics behind each game system may be a little different, the idea behind all RPGs are exactly the same. To spend a few hours with some friends and have a lot of fun. But what about dice? Don't RPGs have a bunch of weird dice? It all seems really complicated. I don't think I can do it. Yes. RPGs tend to include dice. Generally, in the story, when your character does something that can be easily accomplished, say, making a telephone call or eating a sandwich, then you kind of just describe what your character does and the story moves on from there. But every once in a while, your character will do something that requires a little more skill. There's a chance that the character might not succeed at their task. Say, breaking into a house, or persuading a cop not to give you a ticket. That's where the dice come in. When your character attempts to do something, the player that takes on the role of the narrator will decide if that character has a chance of succeeding or failing. If he decides so, then you'll have to make a dice roll and kind of let fate decide whether you succeed, or the degree of success to which you succeed. Now every game system has different rules for how the dice works, so we won't get into all the mechanics of how that happens, because it's different all the time. But for all role-playing games, you will generally need a certain pool of dice to draw from. That's because sometimes things are easier to accomplish than others, and you have a greater chance of success. Convincing your mother that there will be absolutely no drinking at the house party you're going to may have a 25% chance of success. Breaking into the FBI's private records online, that may have a 1% chance of success. Here are your typical dice set for RPGs. You can find them in all kinds of colors and designs, but basically they look the same shape-wise. A D4. Whenever someone talks about dice in an RPG, they'll reference them like this. D, meaning dice, and a number. The number represents the number of sides that the dice have. D4. A D6. This should look familiar. D8. D10. D12. D20 and a D100. While these exist, <laughs> many people find it easier to roll two D10s, one representing the tens position in the number, and one representing the ones position in the number. Some games even call for a D2, which obviously doesn't exist. Guess you could just flip a coin or something. If you need a D2, just roll a D4 and round down, with one and two equaling one, and three and four equaling two. Same thing goes for a D3. Just roll your D6 and round down that way. In addition to dice, you'll need a pen, probably some paper, a character sheet that is made for the gaming system that you're playing with. All these character sheets are different depending upon what game you're playing, but they all serve the same purpose, to give you all the statistics that you need to make the dice work for the game. You'll need a nice, quiet place to play, 
and some friends who are willing to spend some time with you in that nice quiet place. At least one of these friends should know the rules of the game and be willing to take on the role of the narrator. You'll find that some games, especially ones where combat is very, very detailed, will ask you to have a miniature and a map system set up on the table, or online if you're playing online. That's because in really detailed combat situations, it's a lot easier for you to see what's going on if you can visualize it with some models. Uh, now these models can be anything from very, very detailed painted miniatures to game piece tokens from other games to pennies and quarters and things like that, just so you can differentiate your character from all the other things in the board. Some games don't need them at all, and the player taking on the role of the narrator will let you know if you need one and probably provide them for you if you do. That's about it when it comes to RPGs. Now my next few videos will detail some of the different game systems out there and how they work. Until then, go out there and get your story on and keep gaming.